Hello everyone, what's going on? Now, today's video will be exciting and will be revolving around exploiting Microsoft Office using remote code execution with PowerShell. Now, I know some of you, large chunk of you guys have heard how to use macros in Microsoft Office to create a malicious Microsoft Office document that if you send it to your target or to your testing target would uh, execute malicious code on, on their ends and establish connection back to your machine. Now we will be applying this live today. Okay, now the first step of this video, we need to create a payload, okay? We need to create a payload with PowerShell, okay? If you remember my last video about making an HTML file executable, we're gonna use the same method. We're gonna use PowerShell with, in a, uh, alongside with MSF Venom in order to create a payload that would be used in a Microsoft Office macro, okay? So that's my first step now. I'm gonna show you the uh, command, okay, the output. I will, I will reproduce the steps that I have taken before creating this video. And then we'll be taking this line. So the first thing we do is MSF Venom, all right? And we have the type of build is Windows shell reverse PCP. Okay. Now my L host is your testing machine or the machine you're attacking from. Okay, L port, the listening port, which is the port to which you will establish the connection back from the client machine or the victim machine. So let me choose pick up uh, 4545. Four, 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 okay. Now, in order to make your payload as efficient as possible and as elusive as possible to evade antivirus detection, now I'm not saying you're going to, yes, get away with this. If the, the testing client has, let's say, an installed an endpoint antivirus, and there is a possible chance that this will be detected. Okay, it's all it all comes down to the antivirus database of signatures. So that's why that's why we use encoders and we avoid bad characters whenever we create payloads. So in order to do that, first thing we do is to avoid bad characters with the switch dash b. And then we put the bad, most most used bad characters that antivirus flag as, you know, they flag them as a viruses is the you know, this guy. Now, the next switch is use encoders using the switch dash E, and we use the encoder x86. And our friendly encoder. Okay, now we're good to go to define the methods or define format. The way we will um, make this payload, I'm going to choose dash F, H, T, A, P, S, H for creating a powerful, uh, sorry, PowerShell uh, script inside HTML5. Now, I know I've used this method in the last video, but I'm going to use the same method because this video is about um, creating the payload with PowerShell. Okay. Now, the output will be var. HTML, let me say Microsoft Office version 4. And of course, I forgot to prepend the command with sudo. Now, the password. All right. All you have to do now is to sit and relax till your payload is being. Oh, before I say created, it has been created. Now, let's preview the payload, guys. So var www.html msv4. All right. Now your payload or your encoded payload, dear friend, starts from here. Right? So previously I explained what every switch means in this comment. Right? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to explain again. Go back to my video. Go back to the previous video of HTML, exploding HTML uh, pages or making HTML executable whatsoever. So let me grab that. Oh, let me start from here. 
and I end at the double quote. Let me copy that. Now, the next step, guys, you know, I did the same here, right? Okay. Now, the next step I need in order to make this payload usable and of value to my macro uh, office file, I need to make this payload friendly to the macro format or Visual Basic format. So what do I do here? I need to split the uh, strings in this payload. Why? Because if I go back here, okay, this is my Windows machine, right? So this machine will be the testing machine. This is your victim machine, the client machine, whatsoever. You will be testing from, you will be attacking. So suppose that you are creating a Microsoft Word file and to start, you need to go to Macros, View Macros, and of course, of course, since I have created this before, it's showing them automatically, you know. But let me show you the macro, guys. And now, if you're doing this for the first time, you need to create a new macro. You will not see any of these guys over here, right? You will create a new macro and you will name it over here, and then a new window will open to allow you to enter your Visual Basic code. Now, since I have done this before, I'm going to just save my time, save your time as well. I'm going to click on Edit to show you the payload. Uh, okay. All right, that's my payload, guys. So let me explain it step by step the Visual Basic codes lying down here. Now, this video is not about uh, explaining the basics of Visual Basic scripting, right? There are a bunch of videos on YouTube. You can uh, study these videos, watch them, and learn how to create Visual Basic. But you don't know, you don't need this much knowledge in order to create Microsoft or to create macro in a Microsoft Office document. Now, our part starts from here. This is our payload. As you can see, the string containing the payload, right, needs to have the payload in a concatenated form, you see? So in order to do this, I need kind of splitter, you know, a splitter. I need to sl split my payload into, as you can see, uh, line by line order for my Visual Basic script to handle that efficiently. Okay, so let me go back. So I created a script, guys, to split the payload line by line. Let me show you the script. Uh, go to desktop. So my script, I name it splitter. So it defines, as you can see here, my payload that you that you have already copied from your MSF panel output. You copy that payload and you paste the payload in a variable defined and named as a string. Now, over here, we um, divided the payload into 50 lines. Let me say, as you can see, the counter is 50. And as you can see here, I have the for loop that iterates over the payload and split the payload to 50 line to make it like a readable, reserve, uh, readable and visual basic friendly. Okay. Now, if I run the payload, As you can see, the output is like this. So what you what you do here is you, you copy that. Don't forget the double code. So you copy this. Okay. And you go to your Microsoft Word document and you paste that over here. Okay. Now, after you paste that, you're good to go to send this file to your friend to um, your client, to test their security defenses, to your victim, whatsoever you're trying to um, double codes to test, right? Okay, now you don't forget that there is a very important part without which the script will not work, which is this guy. Create object WB script shell run string. So this line runs my payload defined by the variable string using the W script, which is Windows host scripting, right? So this is your code. 
Now you save that. You go back to your Microsoft Word, go to File, and Save As Desktop. And don't forget, you have only two options in order to get this payload to work. Now, the first option is to save the file as docm or to save the file as doc. Don't save it as docx. Why? Because this kind of uh, malicious code or this kind of payload will not work on not or micro not enabled documents and non enabled micro documents or will not work on new version of Microsoft. So make sure that you save your file as doc or docm. I'm going to make it less suspicious to the uh, victim. I'm going to make it as doc since it will appear identical to the docx. So let me Oh, doc, and let me name it test one. You save that. Okay. Now, now, you can, what you, what you need to do now is, of course, you're not going to grab this file and throw it at the face of your client or your victim. No. You're going to orchestrate a social engineering plot, okay, you're going to study your targets in case if it is your clients. You're gonna, you, you already have gathered information about your clients, about their website, their employee, employee names, all of the information about your client that would help you orchestrate an email. All right. This email will trick your client to open your um, attachment and, and install it. And don't forget to use... Um, I mean, if you've gathered all the information about your client, try to make your email... Okay, try to make your email appear as if it, as it has been sent from uh, an address of, your, of the company you are testing. Let's say, for example, you are testing your clients, um, let's name it Microsoft.com, right? So when you want to send your email to your client, which is Microsoft.com, just say you are uh, testing the HR department. So... Make your email, okay, look like as it has been sent from hr at microsoft.com, bob at microsoft.com. This way, your target, they will see your email as authentic email as it has been sent from person they know. And it will raise the probability that they will open your attachment without any suspicion. Okay, so social engineering is your main vehicle when you are conducting penetration testing attacks. Uh, presentation testing, no attacks. Okay, so the last step, you go back to your uh, testing machine, and you for you, you do listener. We establish a listener, and we send the document. Now I am the victim or the client being tested. I receive a document from my fellow member at my department. He is trying to teach me how to open an email. I mean, they are trying to send me some guidelines on document. I received the guideline and I open it. Of course, make sure you put um, some dummy text over here. I mean, orchestrate your, put some documents, put some content here that aligns with the plan or the plot uh, by which you sent your email, right, right? So make everything look authentic without any suspicion. Now we go back, bingo. So I receive now full control over the victim machine or the target machine. Directory, as you can see, I'm in the desktop and I, I can see the document that I have sent to my uh, victim or friend. I can navigate the file system. I can go to C. See, I am in C now. I can see everything. All right. So I hope that was somewhat helpful. And don't forget, guys, um, you know, try to use encoders in you, during, during the creation process of your payload to avoid antivirus detection. And, you know, make social engineering your good friends.